In the 35th episode of the American Revely podcast, I discuss how the murder of Lee Keltner edges us closer to civil war. After over 100 days of riots and violence across the United States, people are finally starting to snap. And as a son watched his father die in Denver, a terrifying reality began to take shape. In their attempted coup to retake power, the left is willing to do anything at all to survive, including lie, cheat, and kill. Find out the key to stopping Biden and the Democrats before they spark a conflict, next on the 35th episode of the American Revely Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 35th episode of the American Revely podcast. And as always, I am your host, James Lane. And with just 22 days left before the most important presidential election in modern American history, things are beginning to intensify. Happy Monday, folks. Today starts the confirmation hearings for Judge Amy Coney Barrett. And we'll talk a little bit later in the show about that. But first, we have to continue to acknowledge the fact that the left has fully weaponized weaponized themselves. This episode is entitled To Avoid a Second Civil War. Please listen closely and mark my words, the left will be listening very closely November 3rd when Trump's reelected in a landslide, which I, of course, have the stats to back up. That's coming up. But first, but first, folks, we mourn the loss of Patriot Lee Keltner, who sadly lost his life in Denver on Saturday. So, I want to take a minute to read this article to you from the New York Post just to to give what happened on Saturday a little bit of context. This article is called Son of Lee Keltner, who was shot dead at Denver rally, not doing OK. Quote, the son of a protester gunned down by a security guard during a Denver rally is having a hard time coping after witnessing his father's death. The dead man's sister told the Post Sunday he was there. Susan Keltner said in a telephone interview asked if her nephew was doing OK. She said, no, no, he's not. Lee Keltner, a hat maker and military veteran, was part of a Patriot rally outside of the Denver Art Museum when he was shot and killed by a Pinkerton guard hired by a local TV station. Quote, he was my brother, my only sibling, Susan Keltner said, and he also served our country. She declined to provide any more details. Quote, there's going to be a lawsuit, Susan Keltner added, so I don't know how much we can really let out. Jay Keltner, who identified himself as one of the dead man's two sons, changed the cover photo on his Facebook page on Sunday to an image of his father being shot. Quote, I can't believe, I can't believe my dad's gone, he wrote. This will never be right. Rest in peace. Denver police have identified Matthew Robert Doloff as suspect in this case. He was arrested on first degree murder charges and was expected in court today, October 12th. So, folks, this Matthew Doloff guy isn't just any unlicensed security guard. He's a leftist activist hired by an NBC affiliate. Oh, you caught that? Yeah, he was breaking the law by working security without a license. And when you dig around, you find out that Doloff was a left leaning sympathizer with a Twitter full of anti Trump rhetoric. So ask yourself, why would anyone send a leftist security guard with a gun to a pro Trump rally? Hmm, when you watch the video, it isn't particularly pleasant. It's raw, it's real, it's primal. It demonstrates all of the evil of humanity in a split second on film and arguments taking place. Some mace is discharged. A loud bang is heard and Mr. Keltner falls to the ground motionless. Police swarm Doloff and it's over in an instant. We have to ask why anyone would have ever hired this guy. We have to demand equality in courts and justice for Lee. This is a very delicate time, and releasing Doloff as they do to criminals in shitholes like Portland would not bode well for the left at this moment. We'll see if the left offers up any type of condemnation, but it's highly unlikely. And unfortunately, this is nothing new to us, is it? 
Across this country, we've seen well over 100 days of riots, mayhem, chaos and calamity from sea to shining sea. And now we're even seeing the rise of right wing militias and organizations that are meeting the threat of Antifa and Black Lives Matter head on. Clashes took place throughout Portland over the weekend on both sides of the aisle while the self-proclaimed Antifa mayoral candidate leads over Ted Wheeler by double digits. And, you know, folks, at some point, you just have to let people lay in the beds they made for themselves. I, I don't know what else I can say. You know, if you really want to be pissed off, guys, if you really want to be pissed off, the Portland commissioner, Joanne Hardesty, I guess that's how you say her name, Hardesty, is calling the last hundred plus days a narrative while pretending the riots aren't even happening. She's flapping her gums, praising change and blaming the police. Folks, these people in Portland must have been replaced by lizard people because they really, really, really seem to want this chaos to happen. They're vocally and physically supporting this. So at this point, I say screw them. I'm done with Portland. It's a ridiculous place. It's absolutely ridiculous. The Portland DA dropping over 540 riot related cases just poof gone what riots just absolute absolutely ridiculous these riots have exploded across the country in recent months yet some people seem to act like they just aren't happening anymore charleston had horrible riots dallas a few months ago rally north carolina michigan Kenosha, of course, Portland, Seattle, the list goes on, folks. And if you don't know about this, then you've either been watching CNN or just living under a rock. They're the same thing anyway. This violence we've been seeing and, and for some turning a blind eye to this violence, it's not getting any better. The fires are being they're being stoked by the the power hungry left and a mainstream media gone absolutely insane. It's a damn shame that Lee Keltner was killed in Denver over the weekend. But this isn't the first Trump supporter to die at the hands of the left. Doesn't everybody remember Aaron J. Danielson? Remember, Jay was a member of the Patriot Prayer Group, and he was ambushed and murdered by crazed leftist lunatic Michael Reinal who was later shot and killed, of course, by police in Washington state. Here's the thing. There's no parade for Jay. There's no protest. There's no riot. There's no thousand man march for Lee Keltner, for his sons who have no father now. People flood the streets, though, and burn down entire city blocks for dead drug addicts and dead drug traffickers, dead sexual abusers and dead rapists. They do it for criminals. They burn it all down for criminals. Breonna Taylor, and I'm going to say this for you, and then you can say it out loud if you have the balls. Breonna Taylor was a criminal that's been proven now beyond a shadow of a doubt. And what do you hear? You hear radio silence. George Floyd, he was ODing on fentanyl while he was on that pavement. We don't hear about that. How about the poor cop arrested for shooting Rayshard Brooks in Atlanta? You know, the man who stole the cop's taser and shot him with it. We hear nothing more about this stuff. And you know why we don't hear anything about it? Because Black Lives Matter and Antifa aren't actually real. What do I mean? All right, look. They're real organizations, but what they pretend to stand for, they don't actually stand for. That's what I mean by they aren't actually real. Black Lives Matter, make no mistake, is a Marxist group taking advantage of manufactured civil unrest and ignorant low income folks. And Antifa likes to think that they're fighting fascism, except they're fascists. These are very confused people, folks. And at the end of the day, the movie Idiocracy's theme really did come true. And if you've never seen the movie Idiocracy, I'd highly recommend you do so as it's actually relevant for once. Ladies and gentlemen, some people are so hopelessly stupid, so idiotically wrapped in bubble paper that they believe a business's business has to replicate the business's name. Black Lives Matter is a name to a company. It's not a mission statement. It's not an action plan. And the same goes for Antifa, a bunch of pansies running around in black stockings. These things just keep escalating and escalating. And it's time to start asking ourselves why? 
Who benefits from all of this uncertainty? BLM and Antifa are being used to cause chaos and terror to distract voters from the political coup that's being attempted against the Trump administration right now. It's it's so blatantly obvious, folks, that it's almost laughable. It's like the worst written television show ever, and we're all being forced to watch it. I really don't think that Black Lives Matter and Antifa want a civil war. I think they know it would be a very terrible idea for everybody involved, especially them. But there's an accelerant, a a gasoline, if you will, that's being thrown on the fire, and that's the mainstream media. And don't worry, we're going to talk about them, too. It's important people understand what's taking place in Washington, D.C. to really get to know why they need to be highly motivated to vote this year. You need to know what's at stake later. Ladies and gentlemen, and when I get back from the break, we're going to talk about the half ass coup de gras that's behind all of this chaos and tension. So, folks, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to this podcast. I have a favor to ask you, though. I've had my distribution limited on most of my social media platforms and and Facebook. They won't even let me advertise anymore. That's called censorship. And, And the only way I can fight this censorship is for you to help me spread the word about my podcast and articles. So bookmark and share my website, www.americanreveille.com. And of course, please share this episode with friends, family, strangers. And, and if you're listening to Apple podcasts, please follow me and give this podcast an honest rating, though I hope it's five stars. And if you're listening on YouTube, please subscribe to this channel, share, click the notification button and get it around to your friends. We have to find a way around the censors and we have to do it the old fashioned way, word of mouth. So ladies and gentlemen, for any critiques, feedback, questions, compliments, please email me directly at jameslane at americanreveille.com. And a new article came out on Sunday. Another's coming out this Tuesday and we have much more in the works. So folks, I'm searching for more writers as well. I need someone with some videographic design chops. I need a graphic artist. So please, if uh, you have some of these skills, shoot me an email, James Lane at AmericanRevely.com, and let's have a conversation. So, folks, today's Monday, October 12th. I'm James Lane. This is the 35th episode of the American Revely podcast, and we'll be right back. podcast with James Lane would like to take a moment to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to tune into the show. It's because of great fans like you that we strive to deliver the best quality content one can create as fast as one can fling the pen. With that being said, a good little boy never misses his opportunity to sell himself, and though James would never ask you for your money, he would like to let you know that if you absolutely love this podcast, the writing, the art, its production, anything, please do us the personal favor of liking, sharing, tweeting, texting, and talking about this podcast. James Lane is a father, a husband, a U.S. Navy veteran, and is personally committed to the success of the American Revely podcast. Please email James Lane directly at podcast at AmericanRevely.com or please visit our website at www.americanrevely.com. Now, now, let's get back to the, back to the show. Returning from beyond the desk chair, I have come back from the great recesses of my apartment to bring to you, my loyal and wonderful listeners, the second half of the 35th episode of the American Revely podcast. And today, once again, is Monday, October 12th, and I'm your host, James Lane. And with 22 days left before the most historic election in modern American history, I can literally, I can literally feel the tension rising up into the air. The air is thick. It's muggy. It's like a Florida swamp. It's almost nauseating. It's a normal feeling, though. It's our body sensing danger on the horizon. And make no mistake, folks, danger is on the horizon. So let's talk about this coup. I found this article from the Wall Street Journal that really sums it up well. And this article is by Ron Johnson, and it's called, quote, an American coup attempt. Let's read. The U.S. is in a constitutional crisis. 
It began on the day of President Trump's election when unelected bureaucrats mobilized against his presidency. This is a crisis in the executive branch perpetrated by subordinate officials who don't see themselves as answerable to the president. They have effectively established a fourth branch of government, a permanent, unaccountable bureaucracy. The first public display of insurrection began with leaked transcripts of Mr. Trump's phone call with Mexican President Enrique Pina Nieto on January 27th, 2017, and Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull the following day. As the Senate Homeland Security Committee reported, the Trump administration was plagued with 62 leaks, possibly endangering national security in its first 125 days, compared with nine such leaks under George W. Bush and eight under Barack Obama in 2019. A quote whistleblower up the ante by leaking details of Mr. Trump's phone call with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. This fueled Mr. Trump's impeachment in December. Between those examples of mutiny against the president, corrupt actors within the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and apparently, based on recent disclosures, other parts of the intelligence community use their power to sabotage the administration. Their actions can only be described as an attempted coup, as the Ukrainian whistleblower's attorney Mark Zaid did in a January 30th, 2017 tweeting, hashtag coup has started, first of many steps, hashtag rebellion, hashtag impeachment will follow ultimately. This came to fruition. Throughout this constitutional crisis, many journalists abetted the plotters by abandoning even the pretense of objectivity and claiming that Mr. Trump poses a grave threat to the country. These members of the press were willing recipients of leaks that created and perpetuated the false narrative that the Trump campaign colluded with Russia. Not one member of the media has exposed these sources of, of false information. They know who the leakers and plotters are, and they won't tell you. So what I just read to you was the beginnings of the Obamagate scandal. You're going to be hearing so much more about very soon and, and well beyond even the Durham report that's been coming out. Here's the thing, folks. Biden and Kamala are their last ditch effort. They're the left's last ditch effort to reestablish the deep state back into power and sweep everything that's been uncovered back under the rug. This is the big stuff. This is the biggest and deepest corruption I think this country's ever seen. I, I really believe this will go down in history. Truly, it will go down in history. And in the meantime, the left is losing their grasp on everything as Biden slowly loses his mind now that he's out of the basement. And with Judge Amy Comey Barrett's confirmation hearing starting today, Biden will have plenty of chances to embarrass himself in front of the camera. According to Nick Fandos of the New York Times, quote, Democrats will arrive ready to go on the offensive, portraying Judge Barrett's nomination as an election season power grab by Mr. Trump and Republicans. They'll characterize her as a conservative ideologue who would overturn the Affordable Care Act, invalidate abortion rights, and side with the president in any legal disputes arising from the November 3rd election. Republicans will try to deflect those charges and redirect attention towards Judge Barrett's sterling resume and compelling personal story. But their goals above all else is speed, pushing through the confirmation before Election Day. And it appears that they have all the votes they need to install her and cement a six to three conservative majority on the court before the end of October. October. Monday's hearing will begin at 9 a.m. and is expected to take most of the day as each member of the Judiciary Committee gets 10 minutes to deliver an opening statement. Judge Barrett will be the last to speak and is expected to give a short, mostly biographical statement before taking questions later in the week. So let's talk about this for a second. The judge is going to get confirmed, and she's a solid judge with a stellar reputation. So done deal. Here's the thing. The left is being beaten back and the coup is failing. The Democrats made their bed and now they have to lie in it. And it's not only the president's right to nominate this judge to the Supreme Court. It's his ultimate constitutional duty. Biden likes to claim that the Republicans are packing the court by nominating Judge Barrett as soon as an election. But let me assure you, nothing that's happening right now is out of place or unconstitutional. You know how I know? Come close. Come on. 
Come here. I want to tell you a little secret. What's happening? It's happened 29 times. Joe's a damn liar. Yep, Joe is a damn liar. And he's always been a damn liar. And when asked if he'd actually packed the Supreme Courts, he felt he felt like he was above you. He felt like he was better than you. He doesn't need to answer the question because you don't deserve to know the answer. Biden, the asshole daddy you wish you never had. Take a listen. Sir, I've got to ask you about packing the courts. And I know that sure. you said yesterday you aren't going to answer the question until after the election. Huh. But this is the number one thing that I've been asked about from viewers uh, in the past couple of days. Well, you've been asked by the viewers who are probably Republicans who don't want me continuing to talk about what they're doing to the court right now. Well, sir, don't the voters deserve to know? No, where they don't. Saying? I'm not going to play his game. And another big issue with this election is the Supreme Court vacancy. Yeah. I believe, uh, you know, you and Senator Harris have kind of dodged the question a little bit in terms of uh, do you support uh, packing the court, adding more justices? What, what, what would you? I think it's a legitimate question you to ask. But you know what this is all about. The president doesn't want to talk about all this time they're working on making sure they push through a nomination that is where well, the election's already begun and it's never been done before. Over 4 million people have already voted. And what are they doing? Instead of meeting to deal with the needs of the people of Arizona and the rest of the country, what do they do? They don't have time to do that. Yeah, that's a snake. That's a shifty, slimy, scaled, and serpentine specter of what once may have been a man, but is now a six-foot-tall sack of human excrement. Trump could technically just hide in the basement now and let Biden talk himself into a federal prison, which, which, if we're lucky, is where his son will be in the near future. I mean, they've already arrested his business partner the other week. Oh, you, you didn't know that? They arrested Hunter's business partner. I'm not kidding. Look it up. It's kind of weird, though, folks. The news keeps talking about how Biden's ahead in all of the polls, yet we see little to no people at his events. It just feels like a ghost town when Joe's around, which is which is now my new nickname for him. Hashtag ghost town Joe, ladies and gentlemen, ghost town Joe. Anyway, we all know Trump sweeps the election. That's what's coming. And the leftist polls are wrong, just as they were wrong in 2016. Folks, I'm in business. And you know something? Maybe some of you can relate to this. The boss, the boss that always just looks at the numbers, looks at the metrics and never leaves his or her office, never does any managing by walking around that those folks, they, they never last. They, they crumble. They eventually fail. Or at the very least, they, they get subpar results and consistently drive everyone crazy. That's all that's actually happening. The media is stuck in a bias bubble and relying on all of these crooked and convoluted polls. Yet when we step out of the hypothetical office, what do we see? We see Trump boat parades, Trump rallies, Trump flotillas, thousands of Latinos holding a Trump parade in Miami two months ago. The left was saying the silent majority was a myth, yet here we are showing strength in the thousands daily across this country, coast to coast, from sea to shining sea. There's absolutely no enthusiasm for a dinosaur politician with dementia and a vice presidential nominee who's just as corrupt as Hillary Clinton and got into her first political position by being San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown's mistress on the side. He appointed her to two different political positions while she was sleeping with him, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, fact check that such moral character you have, Kamala. It doesn't seem like anyone in their right mind would vote for such trash yet. The polls that matter reflect what I think, not what they think. So don't pay attention to the polls that say Trump is losing. It's fake news because the hysteria makes for good ratings. Unfortunately for us, though, good ratings for CNN could mean civil war for all of us. Folks, it's time to understand something. The, the mainstream media's biased coverage of everything, that's what's shaking the proverbial jar of ants at this moment in history, folks. There's no other culprit and nowhere else to look. Mainstream media must be reimagined when this fight is over. There's a huge chunk of people in this country above 50 years old who do not use the Internet or have social media, which means they only get their news from television and other similar sources. This is why there are droves of older voters who think Trump's a communist and Kamala's a saint. This is why so many of them seem brainwashed and lost. They have no other frame of reference and no one ever told them that the media began to stop reporting 
reporting the news at some point 10, 15, 20 years ago. It, it feels like you're banging on on the wall with your head with these people. And you know why it feels that way? Because you are. The, the college kids and middle class activist idiots, they're in it for other reasons. But the voters that matter, they're being absolutely manipulated and the media needs to be held accountable for it. In the mainstream media's quest to manipulate voters towards the left and line their pockets as much as possible, they've absolutely revealed themselves to be disgusting and vile, spider like creatures, devouring the innocent and weaving webs of lies. These lies hold Dire consequences as the death toll mounts and as patriots like Jay Aronson and Lee Keltner lose their lives for exercising their First Amendment rights. As the right organizes in response to multiple murders, to riots across the country, to attacks on our police and calls to abolish our constitutional rights, the, the left accepts no responsibility, no responsibility at all for their actions. And as the fire begins to burn, the politicians just seem to wash it, watch its glow and, and steal some of its warmth. Yet the media the media pours gasoline on the entire damn campsite. Folks, we have a big problem on our hands and we need to be vigilant. The only solution that I can see, the, the only thing that will stop more violence from happening in the long term is, of course, the landslide re-election of President Donald J. Trump, which all the writing on the walls points to. 54% of people are doing better during COVID-19 than they were doing four years ago. Gigantic enthusiasm compared to the whimper on the left. When Trump is re-elected, the left will implode and any uproar will be squashed quick. If Biden somehow steals this election, though, if he cheats and wins, the leftist groups will become emboldened. Our world will turn to darkness as real jackboots, real billy clubs come for conservatives and Republicans. The Supreme Court will be packed with liberal judges and our justice system will become the joke of the world. Racial justice task forces will be created and the re-education camps will come and the American gulag will be born. This is my prediction, my opinion, of course, but my prediction nonetheless, and it's entirely possible and most likely if we don't get out in droves and absolutely crush the left at the polls November 3rd. We do this and we avert civil war when we reelect Donald Trump. Wait and see. Folks, thank you so much for tuning into the 35th episode of the American Revely podcast. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Nothing at all in the episodes made up and all of my opinions, all of my predictions, they're based and grounded in fact and strategic deduction and reasoning. If you'd like to challenge anything I've said, just leave a comment below or email me directly at James Lane at American And please don't forget to follow me on your favorite social media platforms. The links are in the description section below and please make sure to share this podcast with your friends your family so we can keep growing the stronger we get the more impact we'll have and folks we've got a crazy 22 days ahead of us so what the hell could be next we're going to talk about it throughout the week and i will join you next monday october 19th for the 36th episode of the american Revely podcast ladies and gentlemen crush your week i hope you have a great monday and i'll see you next time peace